everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt Atchity. This is William Bibiani. That's Alonzo Duraldi. We are here to talk about 10 Cloverfield Lane. Alonzo, would you like to tell us, maybe not tell us exactly yeah, what it's about? Yeah, okay. Here's the thing. If you thought the use of the term General Leia in a Force Awakens review constituted a spoiler, you should probably stop watching because we're going to try to not spoil this thing. But for some people, just knowing the title seems like a spoiler. So if that's you, go see the movie, then catch up on the reviews and give us all a break here. Uh, all right, here's what I can tell you. Um, Mary Elizabeth Winstead uh, plays a young woman uh, leaving a relationship. She's on the highway, she gets into an accident. When she wakes up, she is uh, chained to the wall of a bunker and is informed by her host, John Goodman, that uh, he has rescued her from something terrible happening outside. Take a look. Children behave. Something's coming. All right, so to reiterate, if you don't want to know anything about this movie, this is a movie that I think that does benefit from going in cold. cold. Like totally. you know, This is a movie that the less you know, I think the more you get out of it because it does depend on a lot of mystery. And some of those questions, I think, do ultimately we get answers for, but the journey is really interesting and it keeps you guessing and I kind of like that here. For a long time, this movie is expertly crafted, I think. Everything uh, from like the opening get-go, the introduction to Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character, the introduction to her in the bunker, everything John Goodman says basically throughout the movie, right? skillfully acted, skillfully written, there's a lot of, you, you don't know what's going on, but it, it is it is a puzzle box in classic bad robot J.J. Abrams fashion. And, you know, that whole theory is that it's more interesting to wonder what's in the puzzle box than it is to actually see what's in the puzzle box is great for marketing. I think it's bad for filmmaking. And once the movie starts giving us answers, what the answers it chooses to give us, I won't tell you what they are, uh, I was laughing at the movie. <laughs> uh that's, I think that's a little harsh. Uh, I mean, I, I will look, I, I agree that the answers aren't as interesting as the not knowing. Yes. The mystery is more compelling than the resolution. But I didn't mind the resolution. I thought the resolution felt of a piece, and I know that people who follow this stuff, I don't read about movies beforehand if I can avoid it. Apparently, if you are familiar with the film's production history, you'll know that that you know, it's maybe not the most organic set of circumstances. Yeah. But as such, in what we have now, uh, I thought it was fairly effective. Um, but I really, you know, you're right. I, it's definitely more interesting when we're left guessing because the film very cleverly throws possibilities at us. And as soon as one, it seems like we're going to follow one to a logical ending, then we get a complete 180 and discover something else might be true. Uh, we should also mention John Gallagher Jr., who is the third. Right person in there. Um, it's kind of a no exit setup, although it's two men and a woman. Yeah. Um, and you know, and, and and because, you know, we're 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 in there through Mary Elizabeth Winstead's eyes, we don't know who to believe or who to right. trust or or what to believe or what to trust. And right. this, this, this sorry, go ahead. this movie does a good job of every time you think you know something and every time you think that because you take the journey with Winstead's character and you kind of think you get a handle on things, it it pulls the rug out, and I'm not. And what I like about this movie is it doesn't wait till the end to pull the rug out. Like it, it pulls the rug and gives you more information, and then you try and with the character that she's playing, you try and pivot to that and follow that train of thought, and then it messes with you again. And I liked it. I felt like the ending. I I didn't feel like it was unearned. 
I, I felt like there's enough clues in there that it, I was okay with it. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not what I expected, but I, it worked for me. And I thought, look, like this movie does such a good job setting up the mystery that you almost wonder, could any resolution have been satisfactory? Been satisfactory? Absolutely, not, yes, I, it could. I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and would and would a studio movie not feel like it had to resolve it? And that's kind of right. my problem is that what what you have here is that there's the movie basically seems to come to an organic conclusion and then it goes on for about another ten minutes because I, it feels like I guess it needed to be bigger or something. Just tonally, it shifts. Mm. I'm not going to tell you what happens. I think what actually happens, there's a certain amount of sense it makes. I just feel like it's like, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison because I don't want to spoil it, but like imagine if at the end of a Saw movie, one of the characters broke out of their horrible torture trap and then got in a Fast and Furious car chase with Vin Diesel. It's just sort of like, that, that doesn't would be belong. Rad. It, it sounds <laughs> rad, but it would also be an absolute betrayal of everything you just watched tonally. It's a major shift and it doesn't function and I think it makes the movie that precedes that ending feel less important than The Stinger. And I, dis and I don't like that. I, will, I don't I will, think that's I, satisfying. I will, I, think say, it's I will say this. The character has been established up to that point as being resourceful enough mm -hmm. that uh, I believed her actions in the finale. Absolutely. I, I think it, it, I, it... You're talking about tone. tone. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about tone. Talking about I, I also, but I also think just within the character, I'll, I'll be real fast, there's a difference between this and, say, what Ripley goes through in Aliens, for example, to talk about a character who transforms over the course from someone who's very vulnerable to very strong. Mm -hmm. um, the actual climax of Alien still ties into her story. It feels like her story is done and then the movie must continue. Okay, I, well, I, I, so you, I, I, think, I think Matt and I are, are cool with the way this thing goes. You liked it for the most part and then it drops off a cliff for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mostly, I think that the end, although extreme, I think it still kind of worked. It's maybe a little bit more extreme than I would have preferred, but I think it really works. I'm trying to be as oblique about this as possible. Well, uh, but I like this a lot. I, I think it's really effective, and if the ending's unexpected, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. That's, that's, I think that's a real danger with this whole spoiler um, idea, this whole spoiler culture, that you can't talk about anything. Uh, I appreciate this movie, what we're talking about is right at the end of the movie, but if, what if the problem in a movie is a spoiler, and so you can only say nice things about the movie because you have to respect <laughs> wow. spoiler culture? That's crap. I don't care for that. No, what happened I, with Star Trek in the Darkness, where the biggest problem was Benedict Cumberbatch's whole subplot, and then yeah. we weren't allowed to talk about it beforehand. I, I don't like being strang you know, strangled like that. Now, in this case, again, it's the end. I think it's fair, but still, it's frustrating. Numbers. Numbers. Uh, I give this, I think, an eight. Yeah. All right. Uh, it was a nine until it was a four, so I'm going to give it a six and a half. I'll go seven. I, I you know, I think it was it was solid for, throughout for me. I there were parts I liked more than other parts, but uh, you know, ultimately I would say satisfying. It worked for me. Okay, so what's our average? Seven point two. Seven point two. Sure. Uh, seven point two from us. It's in the nineties, low nineties on the tomato meter. Uh, check it out, but don't read anything before you go and see this movie.